Welcome back, everybody, to the grand finals of the GMPGL Malaysia qualifier, which feeds into the GEST Dota 2 main event coming up later this year. In fact, just in a few weeks, I believe, after this particular qualifier finishes. I think there's one more qualifier to go, I want to say, and then we jump into the GEST Dota 2 main event. Over the course of 2013, $48,000 in prize money will be handed out to competitors in the GEST. And, of course, for Southeast Asia, that is a lot of money, especially in Dota 2 and especially for an online event. I'm LD of Beyond the Summit. Thank you all for joining with me, and thank you also for bearing with me through the delay, the remakes, uh, and that sort of thing. And it looks like I might actually be able to cast with somebody else. Give me one second. Team pick. So it looks like I might have a co caster. Anyway, let's continue on. So, of course, this is the grand finals. It's a best out of three. The winner gets a spot in the GST Dota 2. The loser pretty much gets nothing. I think there's a small prize, but the main prize is getting into the main event. It's Team Winter versus Team Mushi, Team ABC, uh, with three former MUFC players, Ling, TFG, and, of course, Winter, who played for them a while back, and as well as being a former Orange player, uh, going up against his old team, a new and improved orange in some ways, just bringing Ohio in especially, and Net, just two really high-impact, impressive players. So, I gotta say, of course, orange are gonna be the favorites in this best out of three, but you can't roll Winter out. He is known for his rather clever and creative drafts that's sort of the strength of this team, but I feel the team execution and synergy is really lacking in ABC. Relative to their individual skill, their teamwork is just not up to par. They're very talented individually, but... They have, and especially Han Trash player, has really impressed me the past few games. But uh, the big thing for me is going to be, can they actually execute as a team in the fights? Because that's where Orange is especially strong with Net uh, and, of course, Extinct. The two supports really showcasing their individual skill and synergy as a combo. So with all that being said, let's jump into the draft. Remember, this is game one. It's a best out of three. And we'll have to see how the series develops from here. But whatever happens this game, we have at least one more coming your way. So with all that being said, Rubik first pick by Orange, really favoring it. And I think this is Orange just knowing that Winter has done his research, will take some of their favorite ears away from them, and realizing that they go for the Rubik first. A little bit unorthodox. Ohio can run at Solomon. He did that for MUFC, but almost certainly it will be Extinct playing this as the four position, which really opens the field up. The Mushi Queen of Pain, or rather the Ohio Queen of Pain is there. Shadow Fiend is there, but they're going for the Luna. Kachikim is not playing, by the way. This is sort of the most experienced possible set of members. And oh, it looks like I will have a caster. So it looks like we're going to remake after the picks, and Cinderin will be joining me for the cast. I wasn't sure I'd have a co-caster because it is very last minute, but graciously he's agreed to join us after the pick. So we'll get his, he, unfortunately we won't get his analysis of the draft, but we will have him for the main game. So Lone Druid, the choice orange, going for the dual cores quite that early after the strong game. support. And with that being said, very lacking Five on the team fight to some extent. Now they do have the Rubik, but uh, they don't really have that follow-up stun for him. So I imagine Winter's going to have his eye on heroes like the Lina, the Lashrak, banning out those combo heroes for the Rubik for the laning stage. Because we all know Extinct and Net love to get active around the map, around that five to six minute mark. They won't go for too many smoke ganks early on. Sand Cane is a big one, uh, right as I say that they ban it. I wanted to say it first before they ban the hero, but unfortunately not able to do so. And what's going to come out next? Really, the combo heroes for the Rubik. That's the priority for uh, if you're if you're on the side of Team ABC. They already have their carry, their solo, and their support. Something Winter really prioritizes is getting one of each in the first set of the draft. Uh, something we talk about a lot is if you don't, then it's too easy to target ban your opponents in the second stage now that teams get three bans in the second stage instead of two. So let's see what they go for on the side of... Uh, one thing that I'm... Well, for Winter's team, they also need combo Five heroes to go remaining. with the Shadow Demon. That's something they don't have either, so they're kind of caught uh, between a rock and a hard place because they don't want to give something like that away to Net. Keeper of the Light was banned out. That's one of Net's favorite heroes to play, but 
Uh, along with Shadow Demon, so what will he play with the, the way the draft is developing? We'll have to see what ba gets banned. Uh, they have a Faceless Void, they have a Mag, they have this big AoE team fight, which can do great against Luna Lone Druid if you get the RP and the Chrono comboed. You have the physical damage, but the issue will be if you don't kill off Luna Lone Druid, if they ever have an Aegis or they have buyback, once that Chrono RP is down, Void and Mag are just not very strong in the fights. Luna and Lone Druid have more sustain and damage over time, more presence in the prolonged fights. So you really need to make sure you hit those. Yes, you have Shadow Demon, but there's two carries. You can't disrupt everyone. Actually banning out the Night Stalker. I haven't seen Ohio play this at all, but just something Team ABC prioritizes is banning those strong melee mid-game tempo controllers. They have one of their own in Magnus, and most likely he'll go to the mid lane. I haven't seen him really be played off lane at all and has not been effective wow. when he has been. Tinker the choice here for Orange. They're banning him out. They're looking to be able to group up and go for the pushes around, say, that 15 to 20 minute mark. Once the core items start to come out, the BKB on the Luna, uh, something like the Maelstrom or the Relic for the Lone Druid. So by banning the Tinker, it enables them to get that strong five-man mid-game pushing power or even split push. They don't have to group up, and grouping up could be dangerous against Mag and Void. Let's see, what will it be the rest of the way? Panda, the band. All mid-game, or all melee mid-game <laughs> mid tempo controllers. Boy, does he prioritize them. And Arge is going back to classic Extinct. Finally, he's going to play a jungler. Boy, this is a treat. This has been a while since we've seen it. Extinct to me, one of the strongest jungle players in Southeast Asia, but he may be a bit rusty, at least in official matches. We haven't seen this in a long time. So that puts Rubik... I could be... It could be one of their cores. They could send a mid and then pick another support and have the Luna going to the safe lane, the Lone Druid in the off lane, and Ohio playing the Rubik mid. Or it could be the five position for Net and the and the remaining. other solo yet to be determined. Let's see which direction they go. They're a bit flexible right now. It makes it hard to predict. They could also look to dual roam with Rubik Chen plus one. Uh, or not plus one. With Rubik and Chen and then have the three solos just sitting the lanes. Kind of a la LGD. And the only issue with Rubik is he doesn't provide the burst damage. Uh, of, say, a Shadow Demon with Soul Catcher. So he's not quite as effective, but can still do in a pinch. Lean of the choice of one of the combo heroes slips through. Well, Shrek was there as well, but they prioritized the burst damage. And this is, I think, the better choice, because you're up against a Luna who can just pop BKB and Eclipse. You want to burst her down while she's RP'd, while she's chrono Same for Chen. You don't want him getting the Hand of God off. So the superior burst damage, more important for this team, because otherwise Orange's team fight is really three. disgusting, especially if Rubik steals Chronosphere Spear or RP. Five seconds I think the me. Lina's a little bit optimal, uh, or more optimal than the Lashrak, but... Now the question remains, so is this going to be a mid Rubik? So that we haven't seen much of lately, or is it going to be the support? I'm leaning towards support, but I wouldn't surprise me if they send Ohio mid on him, because they already have two very strong physical DPS mids, and the one issue with Rubik is he can't shut down a hero like Mag in the mid lane. So if you send Rubik mid, he can farm somewhat well. He can't really deny the Mag's farm. The Shockwave spam is not going to be... Uh, Shockwave spam is not something that can be dealt with by Fade Bolt. Doesn't matter if you lose physical damage when you could just use your magical damage nuke to last hit. So I don't know that the mid Rubik would be strong given the matchup, but let's see, they're really biding their time. Both teams know the importance of this game one. It is a best out of three and you want to get off to a good start because remember only one team secures a berth in the GEST Dota 2. The other issue with sending the Rubik mid is if they want to dual roam, the, they're not going to have really a strong setup stun uh, unless they gank the middle lane. If Rubik's the support, he can bring that setup stun wherever they go, be it the suicide lane, the safe lane, or mid. Whereas if he's going mid, he's only going to be available to offer at mid. But a mid Rubik could be powerful because, and I keep on talking about it, because there's a mag and there's a void. Two heroes that you would love to steal some abilities from, but they go for Pugna! Again, Orange is doing this. They've done it before. We saw it yesterday. It was a little bit of a different game, though. That was a game where they were up against a very weak laning combo. It was, oh, who was it? It was a a Spectre, a Tidehunter plus one. Basically a tri-lane that had no o lane control whatsoever. So I'm thinking we're looking at an Ohio Pugna going mid and then a support Pugna, which puts Luna safe lane, low turret off lane, and most likely just kind of a defensive jungle, slow Five start to the game. They'll three. trade farm with the Void and Mag, and they'll look to just secure the advantage with their mid-game pushing power. Pugna going mid, constantly pressures the lane, can really harass the Magnus, and the Nether Ward will mess up his combo. Uh, 
If he tries to use a Shockwave or a Skewer, he won't be able to blink after that. Uh, though Nether Ward's going to be very annoyed in the mid-game. It can also be very potent against a hero like Lina, and they finish it off with a Prophet. So, getting greedy. Sensing that Orange is not going to go aggressive here, that they're going to sit back and farm. They want to get a hero that can benefit from a passive start to the game, like a Nature's Prophet. And it looks like, well, we might not have a remake in the end. Hmm. Oh, looks like we won't have a remake, but hopefully... Sorry about that, guys. We had a lot of delays, a lot of load issues. Unfortunately, looks like we won't be able to have a co-caster for this game, but hopefully for game two we can. So anyway, let's get our overlay set up. Welcome to game number one. You're watching the GMPGL Malaysia GST Dota 2 Qualifier. The winner of this best out of three gets a spot in that event. $48,000 in total prizes will be awarded over the course of the event. With all that being said, it's time to introduce the two teams. It's Team Bushi versus Team Winter. The mag going to the top lane. We have Winter playing the Shadow Demon. Uh, I want to say this is Wang Wang on the mag. I think that's who it is. Uh, or is it TFG? God, I can't keep them straight. Winter playing the Shadow Demon. Han Trash player, the hard carry on the Faceless Void. Better me. Uh, this would be Ling, I believe, on the Lina. And then nothing more... Uh, who is... I'm actually just going to see if I can check right now, because it's going to drive me insane otherwise. <laughs> okay, so we have TFG on the Nature's Prophet, and then Wang Wang is going to be playing the, the Magnus. So, on the other side, we have Orange Esports, or Team Mushi, as I'm going to call them for this cast. KYXY playing the Lone Druid in the offlane. Uh, Ohio going mid as the Pugna. In the safe lane, we're going to have Extinct playing that defensive jungle chain. Does have a Smoke of the Sea picked up. Mushi is going to be playing the safe lane farmer, the Luna. And I really like this adjustment that Orange has made. I feel it's much more suitable to Mushi's style. Wow, Net. Some very unorthodox warding. He actually runs through the trees. And the reason for this is if you look at daytime, if you go to place this ward, you will have to walk. I mean, I think you might be able to place like just here. But basically... This is a much safer way to place the ward. You ensure that you're hidden behind the fog war. So, just the little tricks from Net. Game one underway now. So Pugna mid up against Magnus. Elaine the Pugna should have the edge in. You can really harass that mag with the blast. Whenever he walks up to the creep wave, he can sit back and shockwave, but Pugna can outspam you. Pugna can outpush you as well, and of course, another blast damages towers. And Ohio, off the bat, is just going to work on these creeps. This is not going to be a fun lane for the mag. I want to point out that they're actually abandoning. They're abandoning the suicide lane, so they're giving free farm away to Mushi. This frees up the supports, uh, the Rubik, as well as the Chen to roam around the map. They do have an early smoke. We could see a la LGD in. Going for some early kills, but picking up a Wildkin is not going to be the best creep. Yeah, Wildkin not going to allow him to gank, but we may see him stack some neutrals and just look to farm them with the Tornado. Uh, most likely he'll just farm with the Wildkin until it dies, and then we'll see him just get another creep. I really think with this early smoke, they could set up some kills, potentially on the mag. If you decrep him, you can do a lot of burst damage with a Test of Faith, a Fade Bolt, even at the fairly early levels. Still only level 1 for the moment, though. KYXY sitting back. What is his bear up to right now? Ooh, forced to resummon it. I guess looks like it might have gotten picked off earlier. Does have tangos in case he gets... Uh, actually, that's not relevant for the dire side. You can't get, eat your way out if you get cliff. but just sitting with a pair of tangos for a little bit of extra regen. He's not getting anything out of the same words. Prophet is just jungling up to level 2. Chen on the chase, harassing him, removing the clarity. Super annoying play from Extinct. And now stacking the neutrals. He is preparing to farm them with the Wildkin Tornado. And it's going to be a triple stack. This is this is something you can abuse only if your opponents are not being aggressive. If you try to do this and your opponents are running an offensive tri-lane, if they're picking heroes that can just go for early ganks, uh, then you'll be punished for it. But because both teams are playing passively, this is something Arge can get away with.
Dyer's bottom tower is Luna are getting some great farm, and the Void really suffering so far. Hontrash player, the Bear is just disrupting the creep equilibrium, kind of messing up the pulls as well. And Last Hand Under's tower, Faceless Void, normally very good at Last Hand in this situation anyway, with high base damage and a decent attack animation. Not... We've seen him play really well. Perhaps the fatigue is showing now. Orange had a quick 2-0 victory, whereas uh, over on the other side, on the side of Team ABC, they really had to work to get their wins in the last series. So perhaps that's what we're seeing now is the effect of that drawn-out fight. But Quelling Blade would be the choice here, just to make sure you're not missing last hits under the tower. Hasn't gone for one yet, but I think it's a worthwhile pick. But pays for itself very quickly. Moshi's going to get an uncontested Tier 1 bottom. Will they rotate the Prophet in after this? It's dangerous to do so. Luna can kill you, run you down pretty early. Mushi has not spent his gold yet. I wonder what he's going to go for. Could it be a Midas? It's always possible, but he's not really rushing it full out. He did get the early rain of Basilius to put pressure on this lane. Still haven't seen that smoke yet. He did just clear the camp with the Wildkin Tornado. Already up to level 4 at 3.5 minutes in. If you don't punish a Chen who's jungling defensively and he gets Wildkins, stacks the neutrals, he's going to go for another stack now. He can farm these as well with the Tornado. That is going to get him super fat. He will have to send it back to base first, but he's got the mana to do that. So look for him to stack this camp. And uh-oh, here we go. Smoke was revealed. Unfortunate. They just unable to find the opening. And now okay, KWX are running. A TP into a Sprout. There's no Tangos on the hero. Needs that Sprout. Doesn't actually have the mana for it. He's only... Oh, he's level 3. He didn't take a point in Sprout. He took 2 points in Nature's Call. I do not like that build. When you have a Shadow Demon and Alina, you really want a point in Sprout. They, if they were expecting passive play, then we should not have seen the supports roaming around. A little bit of inconsistency, either the Prophet just getting a, a miscommunication and expecting that he's just going to be jungling, whereas the team wanted to gank and didn't tell him, or uh, the Prophet making a mistake with the skill build. So it cost them the first blood there, but they can still put some pressure on the site. The trade will be there. Net's up to level 3 already. Chen just continuing to stack all over the place. We're going to see him stack this camp one more time. Then he's going to farm it. He already cleared this camp. But with that tornado, he's going to be very close to level... Uh, I believe to level 6 off of this camp. He's stacking both camps simultaneously. Nice micro by Extinct. Nothing, nothing world-beating, but certainly good enough. Hontrash player not going to get the tower. Prophet actually snags that. Midas coming soon for him. They got the tier 1 bottom. Mushi goes for power trades. Worried about getting bursted down. And that makes a lot of sense. You're up against Lena, you're up against Chronosphere and RP. You need every little bit of HP to live through that initial burst. You're not being harassed in lane, so Tranquil Boots don't offer you a thing. This is a nice adjustment with the item build. From what th what's really become the standard, you almost never see Luna get power treads, but in this game, it's perfect. It's gonna pop the Eclipse. First blood for Mushi. Nature's Prophet is punished, and Net was there if needed, but not needed in the end. Meanwhile, Extinct has not even gotten involved in this game, just farming away at his jungle. Look how his levels are going to pop as soon as he gets these three creeps. Level 5 and 3 quarters at 5 and a half minutes, and getting close to level 6. One more set of stacks, he'll have it. Just killing the small camp, I believe. If he stacks it once more, he should be able to get it. They are range creeps, but... Just gonna be able to get a range in time, I think. Uh-oh, mid lane RP onto the Pugna. Pretty squishy hero. Should be able to gank him and pick him off. He decrepifies himself. There's no nuke, but it doesn't matter. The last auto attack is there. Unfortunately, it wasn't the first blood. That already happened. Bottom. Void's gone for Midas. Prophet may pick his up as well. No, early rate of Basilius and Boots. Just using the Midas for the first time. Now Hontrash player quite an early Midas. Six minutes in. Moshi still ahead by a lot when it comes to net worth. 700 net worth ahead. Pugna CSing quite well in the middle lane, up to 37 CS, ahead of the mag by a lot. As I mentioned, this is just not a matchup that Magnus can win if the Pugna plays properly in the 1v1. If the, if the smoke ganks come mid, then they can punish him, but they went for the top lane, and just the slight miscommunication cost them that first blood. So even though they finally get the kill mid, it comes at grace cost. They're first e forced to use the RP, but more importantly, the support spend valuable seconds rotating in for that gank from the top lane, whereas Extinct just sitting in the jungle, He's going to have a mech at like the 9 minute mark at the rate he's going. And a mech that early, with a Luna getting this much farm, could be rushing a BKB or maybe a Drums. Oh, it's a Drums. Even smarter. Just because they have such an early mech, they have Pugna. They can start mowing down towers. And unless you catch the Chen inside of Chrono, you're not going to be able to kill them. Uh, you don't really have the burst damage. Lina's only level 4. If Lina was level 6, then you could probably kill heroes inside of Chrono, even with Hand of God. But with Hand of God mech... If Chen just sits back, pops the Hand of God when they go in. Here comes Hontrash player, wants to Chrono this. 
Prophet's thinking about TP. Finally, he arrives. The Chrono, well positioned, but not going to be enough. Net's not level 6 yet, or he could look to steal this, but he's already level 5. Goes Prophet back into the tower. Chrono is blown, and Prophet will fall. Bit of a miscue there, to say the least. Prophet canceled his TP multiple times, then finally joined the fight. That was way too far to dive. They should have just backed off. They forced the issue, and they pay for it. Chen, mech coming very soon, up to 2k gold. Mushi just pressuring that bottom lane. Gonna get a tier 2 unopposed. This is a lot to give away. Winter's oldie level 3. The inefficiency of these supports. We've seen well, we've seen earlier in this tournament that ABC has struggled a bit. Even when they go for their offensive challenge, their roaming combo supports, they've just not been quite on the mark. It feels like this is a team that hasn't practiced as much as they need to to play against a team like Orange. But again, Orange has a lot more overall team experience, I would say, as of late playing with this set of players. So perhaps understandable, but... When you're up against the individual skill of orange, you really need to know exactly what you're doing with every second of the game. You can't waste yeah. time the way that they have. So many different examples you can point to. Putting them at a big deficit, already down by over 2k gold, over 3k experience. The core items are out. Chen has the mech. And the five man's coming. Hugna's probably just going to get tanky here. We'll have to see. I don't think he... No, often the solo mid Pugna can go for mech, but he's such a squishy hero that he's probably better for him just to get like a vitality booster. Something that'll ensure that he's alive in the fight to spam multiple nether blasts. He hasn't spent that gold just yet. It could be the arcane boots as well, because with Chen rushing mech, they don't have them. So arcane's the other option, maybe the better one. Hag is level 8, but can he find the initiation? Notice the Chen's positioning. Extinct is too far away to actually catch with an RP. And if you go in a Luna, Hand of God comes out, the mech will be there soon. Uh, it hasn't been delivered just yet, but this next round from the Courier should be enough to bring it in. Yeah, everything is ready to go. And you can also just send that here who's caught in the Chrono, caught in the RP back to base. So as the pressure mounts mid, KYXY frees up, gets some more space. Uh-oh. Mag goes in, gets picked off. I think he was actually lifted back towards Orange. They actually are going to throw out a Hand of God just so, to ensure they can continue to farm without having to go back to base. Earn up on that. All of these are early game, mid game, utility pushing items. They're not going from late game. This is a new orange because if you watch Mushi play carries, I guess over the past few months, he'd often go for things like Candomitis, greedier items, late game items. They are adjusting their style, showing themselves to be quite a bit more versatile, even incorporating here like Pugna into the mix. Going back to some old old tricks that have worked well for them with the, uh, with the Chen and the sort of the defensive stacking and pulling from the supports. Not going for a lot of early smoke ganks like LGDN, but now they're putting the pressure on. It's a timing engagement from Orange, and RP is up, but can they cliff him? They could throw the mag up on the cliff. They're not going to, because he can skewer away from that. Instead, they just go for the claps. They're not going to have enough to bring him down, but they will drive him back. Meanwhile, Mushi comes in. This is going to be a tier 2 falling bottom. Will the Void come to defend it? He went Midas. He can't really do a whole lot. All he can look to do is try and farm his lane. Unfortunately, while he does that, the base is going to be... Uh, not the base, but all the outer towers are going to be knocked down one by one. And with the early mech, with the early drums, the urn, they could go Roche. They could also look to go for the tier 2 mid. Either is a perfectly viable option. Most likely what they want to do is rotate some heroes bottom, force a TP reaction, and then just back off and either head towards the enemy agents or head towards mid and go for that tier 2. Basically, if they force the void to TP back, that's waste his farm time. And it allows them to go elsewhere and create pressure on the map. And if they don't come to defend this tower, it's going to be continue to take a lot of chip damage. 2k gold up Amushi. The Yasha's coming soon. Uh-oh. Oy, oy, oy. This is not looking good for Winter's team. Team ABC it seems to be in a lot of trouble in this first game. They're losing out of towers. The the map, the safe areas on the map to farm are quickly diminishing. Aggressive lane wards being thrown down by net. And I just lo I feel that the way that Orange drafted was so smart. They went back for the Chen when they saw the greed and an instant assassination. Test of faith plus decrepify equals dead mag. Who I think that's his third death of the game, though, second death, but he is not having a good game at all. He had an early level eight, but how do you go in on this team? With the early mech, the early Chen level six. And the good positioning from Extinct, he needs a blink. Otherwise, they're just never going to find the initiation. And Hot Trash player is going back for Battle Fury. This is a disastrous choice, honestly, against Orange. When you go for a Battle Fury here, that just delays your point where you can really join the fights for even longer. They went for a big team fight composition with Lina, Mag, and Void. And now they're going back for split push and stalling the game. Prophet didn't rush a Midas. He went for Treads. 
as well as uh, Arena Vasilius, which is more of an early to mid game pressure build, which would make sense if the Void was building that way, but they're not. The pause flies out right as Void Time walks in onto Mushi. <laughs> oh boy. They can't be happy about this. There are a lot of creeps here in support. But a lucky Luna ultimate could be trouble. Ohio is frantically charging towards top. Went for the point booster. Not the vitality booster, but similar effect. He's very tanky. He's very survivable. They will chrono Mushi. They got to bring him down soon because Eclipse is coming. The hand of God is here. The Laguna is enough. They get hit the kill. And Ohio sticking around. Oh boy, Ohio. Probably don't want to be here much longer. Remember, KYXY is the hero that just... The player that's been forgotten about this game. He was solo off lane. Remember, he was getting nothing out of that lane forever. Now up to 4k net worth. Sitting on 700 gold. Most likely we're seeing that Maelstrom next. Midas way too late to go for that, in my opinion. They could, but it doesn't suit the way that they're building the rest of the team. So Maelstrom most likely next in line. And Contrast player getting very greedy. I think for Orange, though, got to keep the pressure up. Go for the Tier 2 mid or go for the Tier 1 top because just sitting back it for too long is going to favor the style that we're seeing. Lena cannot look to go in here on that. The Nether Ward will absolutely murder you. And now they're doing it. Going for the Tier 1 top. After this, most likely we're going to see them. Someone will TP bottom to defend, and then they're going to go for the Tier 2 mid. And once they get that then the map control is very limited. There is a Nature's Prophet, but he's not going to split push quickly with only Treads and Basilius. No big items, no Necro Book, no Maelstrom. Nothing that's really going to accelerate his pushing dramatically. They're trying to go for the trade. This is all they can really do. Despite having Mag and Void, they can't fight. Hand of God, Eclipse, and Pugna Ward is just way too much team fight. Plus, if Rubik steals any big, any big AoE stun, the fight's over. And even Shockwave might spell doom. Orange is really playing this game masterfully. Again, I think the Chen pick is really what put them in this position because the way that the way that Team ABC drafted just tipped their hand too early. Going for the Void, the Mag, that early on, it was obvious they weren't going to get aggressive with those picks, and it's something Orange knew they could exploit with an early to mid-game timing push, and that's what we're seeing. Slow, methodical play. Pugna's going to be the choice for initiation. Gets solo RP. They should be able to bring him down. There's no Hand of God. It was already his top. And so they will get the kill. An expensive one, though. Rubik steals Sprout. Probably was angling for that teleport or that profit ultimate. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Mushi just continue to muscle down this top tower. He's going to have a BKB soon. Interesting. He's up against Demonic Purge. He's up against Bash, Chrono, and RP. But there is still a lot of nuke damage, so I think it's a smart choice. It's also one of the best items in the game for breaching high ground. As weird as it sounds, it's still the right item in this game because of the style they're playing. You could go Manta, and that gives you a little bit more push. But I think the BKB is overall the safer choice. The only way you're going to die is if you don't get to pop that BKB. And even then, with Extinct here to heal you, to mech you, Hand of God, you, you should be absolutely fine. The Tier 2 is going to fall top, and after this, is just the Tier 2 meta, then they go Roche. And in that pit, even though they've got Mag, even though they've got Void, the board is really going to limit their ability to take a fight there. As long as Extinct has good positioning, which I assume he'll continue to have. Arcane Boot's now up in him. Mushi's TPing bottom. I gotta say, the two big issues for me this game are just the inefficiency of the supports roaming early on and some questionable team decision making from ABC. It seemed like they had two different strategies at play. The Void was farming for late game, going very greedy. The supports going for a lot of early smoke ganks. Profit going from early to mid game items. There's like two, two different styles of play in one game and... Well, the Midas is good for one thing. That's the extinct creeps. Sprout up on him. He does have tangos. Look how prepared he is. Still sitting on his tangos. 17 minutes in. Sprout that was stolen by Nat. Thrown back the other way. Now it's going to steal time walk. So on trash player can't even go in. There aren't any kills just yet. He's going to time walk back. Oh, boy. There may not be kills, but that is some flashy support play and coordination. This is what I was talking about with Orange. I mean, these two as a support tandem are just so... It's like they know what the other one is thinking before that player even makes a decision. BKB is on the way for Mushi. Orange just making all the right moves this game. I know it sounds like a broken record, but that's really the story of this game. They're just not leaving any openings. They're punishing every little mistake. And it's gotten to a point now where... 
I mean, the team fight that they were hoping for just isn't going to be there. Winter's only level 7. Can't really do a whole lot. And who do you purge? You have to purge the Lone Druid Bear or the Luna. You can't purge both. And whoever you don't purge is going to be going to work. You got to initiate on somebody, but how do you kill anyone? Shadow Poison Spam is going to hurt you with the zaps. And comes the mag. RP, not the best. Only catches Mushi, but might be able to bring him down. Oh, waste the Eclipse. Mushi should have just let that fall. Probably bought back. I think he has it. No, actually he doesn't. But blows the Eclipse. He's not going to have that for quite a while. Now they're in a headlong retreat. They did pick off the Luna. Just had enough damage to bring her down. Unfortunately, the mech wasn't able, wasn't able to get in range for that. Now the Chrono that was stolen... Uh, or not stolen, rather. That's, sorry, that's the Void Chrono. Just very late to use it. And Lena on the way out. Zapped down by Net. Net is actually looking for a double kill here. Wants Han Trash player. Time walk available. Is Microid his treads, but does not have enough mana. Even on the int treads. Still will fall. RP down. Chrono down. Chrono was not stolen. Thank God if you're ABC. But Orange, despite the death to Mushi, are heading straight into the Roche Pit. They know the big ults aren't in play. No, nope, they're not heading straight towards the Roche Pit. They're heading bottom. Because Prophet is being a nuisance. He went back for a Midas. Well... That's a rather late Midas. I think he's had it for a couple of minutes now, but I mean, even so, they're angling for late game, which makes sense, but he could have gone for this Midas earlier. They weren't pressuring him too much. Lone Jury was trying to interfere with this jungling with the bear, but it's you can't really shut down a you can't shut down the Prophet's run like that. He sprouts to try and TP out, but he's trapped, he's surrounded, he's brought down. Net is dominating, and boy, oh boy, does it feel like it. Sitting on about a 6-7k gold lead. Experience is dead even. Orange have not won this game yet, but with 6 Outer Towers down, what they should do is get a Gem of True Sight, secure the Roshan after de-warding, set up the... and, and with a haste and a 4 staff on the Pugna, you shouldn't really be able to burst him down. Mushi just needs to make sure that he doesn't get caught by everything away from his team, and... I mean, Blink Dagger up a mag makes that a bit harder, but realistically, Hand of God, if he's just quick on the BKB, you can react in time. When Mag blinks in an RPs, if you're really quick, you can pop the BKB. And they're not killing you with just auto attacks at this point in the game. Void, Battle Fury soon, but still not that much physical damage. Once he gets that first attack speed item, the Mask of Madness, uh, even the Eagle Song helps quite a bit if you go Butterfly Rush at this point. Then he'll really start to hurt. But with these items now, unless he gets really lucky with the Bashes, he's not going to be able to kill off. Uh-oh. Lost control of my mouse there. He's not going to be able to kill off. Uh, the Luna inside of the Chronosphere. That was kind of a fluky fight. I, everything had to go perfectly for them to get that kill on Luna, but not something you could expect if you're on Team ABC. They are smoked up. Winter's looking for the backstab. Are they going to be able to find a good opening here? The backstabbers may become the backstab. Prophet's getting caught out a little bit. Ward's on the high ground. Four staff away for Net. RP comes in. Stolen! RP is stolen, but Net is not in position to use it. If he was, it would be a beautiful fight. Eclipse flies out. Does good damage. Wall inside of the Chronosphere. Healed up. Still alive. Test of Faith was backtracked. That would have pretty much killed off Han Trash player otherwise. And now, onto the Nature's Prophet. The Bear comes in. Looking to do some damage. Needs an Entangle. Winter disrupts the Luna. That's the best here to disrupt because you get those illusions. But they're not going to be able to auto-attack anything. KY, XY on cleanup crew duty. Prophet sprouts himself. Himself. Now TB's out. It is way through. They need the nuke. It's still on cooldown for three seconds. Couldn't get in range for the clap either. Ohio was bottom lane. So all in all, kind of a chaotic team fight. Call it a win for Orange. Pugna did buy back for that though. But still, this is going to give them the Roche, and that makes it totally worth it. Oh, going in on Lena. There's your life drain. Not enough damage. Just cancels the life drain, then goes for the Nether Blast. Just some harassment, though. That's the goal. Just keep the lane pushed out. Pressure the Lena back so they can't contest this Roshan. Uh, some people complain about stream lag. Not really sure what's going on. I'm not dropping frames, so I guess it's on Twitch TV's end. Do apologize for any inconveniences, guys. Try restarting your stream. Try changing qualities, settings. I'll take a look at the stream after the game and see if there's anything I can do, but... Pretty much it looks like it's just switch right now. Void's coming in. Doesn't have the Chrono for a while yet. Uh, Rubik still has to sit on that RP. Remember, he didn't get to use it last fight because he'd already been forced to up onto the high ground by the Pugna away from the engagement. Still, the Rack's under siege, and that's not really what you all Lagoon on Mushi. But Mushi still has Aegis, so he doesn't mind. He's going to save that BKB until they actually kill him once. Then he'll pop it on round two. 
Prophet's base trade, but he cannot win this base trade. That was a beautiful RP. Catches the entire enemy team. Chrono following up. That's some cleave. That's some damage. Three dead. Four dead. That's an ultra. Although he doesn't get the credit for the kill. Now Mushi BKB is after the Aegis. He is going to die. It's going to be a team wipe. They got Rex, but talk about an expensive set of Rex. Holy freaking shit. Oh boy, you know, I'm like, oh, he's pushing top, better see how quickly it's going to then instantly Mag jumps in. I think he came through the trees and then blinked on it and they didn't have the vision of him. Holy freaking cripe, he's not profit. TP in, he wants this tower, he's gonna find it, he should be able to TP away. Backstabbing the tower, now the chance gonna work on the Rex. They got Rex, but is it enough? Giving up five heroes like that and blowing the Aegis, not... I mean, this is a game that can, they have a profit, they have a void with the battle fear, getting one Lady of Rex is not enough. They built this lineup with items, with heroes, to go for a mid-game timing, to get your towers around, I mean, really around the 25 to 30 minute mark. The fact that they were going for Rex sooner was just a testament to how well they executed. But giving up that many kills could cost them this game if they lose another fight or two like that. I think they're still in a decent position, but positioning becomes very crucial and very difficult at this point in the game. Prophet can keep that lane pushed out. They also have lots of AoE between the Lina as well as the Mag. So losing Lane of Rex, not really not the end of the world. Mushi not going back for the Manta style. That's the power of having RP and Chrono, that big AoE team fight. But winning one of those fights isn't enough. They're gonna need another. Boy should have that next big item on the way soon. It's gonna be the completed BKB, and it is flying out to him now. Blink Dagger up on Rubik. Wow, Net is filthy rich. Extinct sitting on 2k gold. Net's actually getting his items this game. Uh, the story of Orange has really been that since Net's joined the team, Extinct has gotten ultra greedy. I was even teasing him about it the other day. Basically, he knows that Net is so good with so little gold that he's just going to get all those all those fun playmaker items for his four position heroes, like the Rubik, the Shadow Demon. That's sad there. Unfortunately, Demonic Purge does the damage at the end of the duration of the slow, so... The bear just instantly recalled, Demonic Purge wasted, but trapped for the moment in the trees. Not able to disable that recall in time. Lurking on the high ground, here comes the Chronosphere, potentially. They want the Bash to start on Mushi, they don't want to blow Chrono yet. Something was stolen, what was it? It was only Time Walk, there's your Eclipse, does a lot of damage. The Chrono will fly out, the BKB up with Faceless Void. I don't know if they're prepared for this, but at the same time, does he have the damage to bring down Mushi? He's got to bring him down. Mushi, still alive, was sent back to base by Extinct in the midst of the fight. Now, Hauntress player forced to Time Walk up onto the cliff, will escape. Nature's Prophet running, probably going to fall here. Could try a defensive Sprout, no chance, no how. Down he goes, three heroes dead. Chrono was used, RP was used as well, and that means time for a second lane of Rex. You can buy back, sir, but what are you really going to do? The only thing you can do is push top aggressively. One hero can TP to defend this while the rest push into the base. There's no RP, there's no Chrono. This really should be a second lane of Rex, and no Glyph either. So despite not having, I mean, really the most items, Mushi doesn't have his man style yet, despite having seven outer towers. Uh... But it should be enough. Hauntrash player gets a tangle. Caught out of position. Zapped into submission. Down he'll go. Net steals something else. Just onwards and upwards for him. They're, lo they're trading their top top racks potentially. Oh, here comes the rotation. And Prophet's going to work on it though with that Shadow Blade. Gives you a little bit of extra attack speed. He's even got agility trends. Just trying to bring it down. Are they going to go for the trifecta? Yeah, it looks like they're going for a third lane of Rex. RP still pulling down. 40 seconds to go. Still no glyph. They're going to force the issue here. Can they get the racks in time? We'll have to wait and see. The bear can be resummoned in one second. Here it comes. Chen is still here. No hand of God. No mech. The tower's down, but they did trade Rax for this. They could have just gotten two lanes of Rax and gotten out for free. So they really got to get this third lane of Rax down. The bear doesn't quite get the kill. Focus the damn Rax. They're not doing it yet. They want Winter. They'll get Winter. Now they're focusing the Rage Rax. Not the best focus fire in my book, but the Rage Rax will fall. It looks like it's going to be enough. Prophet did... Die? No, he TP'd out. He didn't actually die in the end. Mag TP's in. Has the RP. Blinks it. Skewers back, Chad. The extinct will fall. Mushi, though, just wants the Rex. Working on it. Sent back to base. Won't get it in the end, but the base is almost entirely cleared out. Didn't get the Rex, but got all the buffer buildings. Worth it. Definitely worth it for Orange. It looked like it might have not been quite enough, but getting the tower and the range Rex, sufficient damage for sure. And the downside to picking one of these lineups, where you have RP and Chronosphere, these big long cooldown AoE ultimates, and heroes that pick build BKBs as well. If you die or if you abuse those, that die and buy back. 
you don't bring a lot to the table. Faceless Void is not like an anti-mage where just having your Manta Cell off cooldown means that you're doing a ridiculous amount of damage and have a huge presence in the team fights. Void, if he doesn't have his Chrono and his BKB, very easily dealt with. You can loosen beam him, you can look for the entangles, the decrepifies. So many ways to deal with the Void and kite him, prevent that physical damage. Everything looking for uh, pretty good for Orange here in game number one. Profit TP's way to safety. He's doing his best to stall the game, but after losing that big fight, I mean, you can maybe keep the lanes pushed to about the river, but beyond that, good luck. And if Arts just throw their bodies at the racks, the bear, the Luna illusions, there's just nothing that they can really do to defend it, realistically speaking. They're going to have to wipe like three or four times to even be in any danger. And, and I freaking skatey. This is, this is just luxury for Mushi. <laughs> Oh, just raw stats for him. Anything to help keep him alive. Just tired of dying is Mushi. He already had the ultimate orb, so he couldn't build something like a heart instead. Just gets the most HP that he can get for the cost that builds with the ultimate orb. A Manta gives you more push, but not as much HP. So, here comes round number... I guess only round number three. They've only had three big pushes into the base. They've both have been... Uh, or two, actually. And both have been successful. Even the one where they got wiped, they got what they came for at the end, I guess, which is the Rax. Here comes the BKB. On to Ohio. Down he goes. RP is there as well. Catches a few. KYXY. Something was stolen by Rubik. What was it? It was the RP. Net, though, getting focused by the Prophet. He wants to RP this. Can he find it? He will, but there's no backup. Down he goes. And they do wipe fully for nothing because Pugna was mid. The, I really think that ward makes a big difference in these fights. Chan up on the high ground. Four steps away. They can't bring him down. Chrono RP are down. If you have buyback, this would be a great time to use it. Looks like only the Shadow Demon... Oh, no. Nope. Actually, Pugna bought back a little bit earlier as well. I think it was actually right after that fight where he died. Uh, so he's got... He bought back, but unfortunately, it looks like the rest of the team isn't able to... The, crucially, the Lone Druid can't. But with all the ultimates down, if you can just buy back and go straight for the Rex, you can just back to the Rex, win the game. Uh, at least force the glyph out, but they choose not to. They're going to play it safe. Angle for that next Roshan. With the next Roshan, they really should be able to take Rex. This is such a... It's it's a close game in the sense of golden experience, but when you look at map control, Orange is basically one good push away from winning the game, and it doesn't even have to be a big push. They just have to get a little bit. Here comes an RTK TP, potentially, into the middle of many heroes. There is backup here. Eclipse flies forth. Mag needs to skewer away, but he is not doing so yet. He may die. Lina's going to take the fall. Takes the blow. The chase is on. KYXY with the bear leading the way. Has the hyperstone. Has the maelstrom. Going to work. Winter is in trouble. No, go for the racks, they say. Finish the game, Mushi says. I'm tired of <laughs> Luke getting wiped by this big AoE. Chrono's cooling down. RP's cooling down. With the glyph, they'll have just enough time for Chrono. Was it stolen? It's just time walk. They should be able to take this. The glyph. Is going to be popped out. Void jumps in. Mask of Madness up. Going to work on Mushi. Even with his... I don't think he's going to live. They need the mech. The mech comes in. All the support in the world possible. But Mushi still will fall. Rax is down. That's Mega Creeps. That should be it. I just don't see the pushing out. But it's going to be a bloodbath before it all ends. The Deso up on Prophet. Just your pub stomp style. Opa Gangnam for him. Maybe going for the Pugna now. But realistically, they're down Megas. KYXY is chilling in the enemy fountain. Looks like he may have made a purchase there. Uh, I think he might have picked up a TP scroll. Here comes the TP, the buyback from Extinct. He doesn't have Hand of God, he already used it. But just buying back for, really, for shits and giggles. Lagoon on KYXY. Running top, looking for the escape. It's all just basically about cleaning up a couple kills at this point. Game well in hand for Orange. GG indeed. I, I think that's a GG. Nope, just a G. <laughs> just a single G. It, it, it was a game. It was a game. Maybe not a good game for his perspective. All right, guys. This is a best out of three. Currently, Orange leading at 1-0, but we're not done just yet. Winter versus Mushi. Who's your money on? Mushi takes game one. He strikes first, but Winter's team not out for the count. The former Orange player going up against his former carry player in Mushi. He got bested by him in this game. Overall, I got to say, it just felt a little schizophrenic from Team ABC. A lot of the item decisions and the... 
the sort of the strat strategic decisions were at odds with each other. They were going for farming, I, a, sort of a farming style with the Prophet and the Void going for Midas's, but the Prophet didn't rush his Midas. They were going for a lot of roaming, uh, not really converting the kills, some miscommunications, some mistimings. Not the most polished performance from ABC, but also give Orange credit. They really played this one well, and I, again, I feel it comes back to the draft. As soon as they saw the Void mag, they said, we're going Chen, we're going greedy mid-game, Timing push. We saw the early farming of the jungle with the Wildkin. All around, really a, a well-crafted strategy from Mushi from Orange. They take game one. Game two comes up soon in the best out in this best out of three. I should have company for that. So thank you for tuning in, guys. I'm LD. If you enjoy my casting, be sure to follow me. Twitter.com slash LD Dota. You're watching the GMPGL Malaysia qualifier. The grand finals at that. Game two is underway. Or will be underway soon in this best out of three. Stay tuned.